This is another episode of Design Your Dream Home with Doug and Steve. And now the architects, Doug Pat and Stephen Chung. You are listening to the Design Your Dream Home podcast with Doug and Steve. I'm Steve. That is Doug. Good morning, Doug. Good morning, Stephen. How are you doing today, man? It's been such a long time, Doug, since we last spoke. One day. I don't think we've ever done that before. <laughs> yeah, we two have podcasts had a great, in two days. Two podcasts, two days. So I'm real excited uh, today for our guest, Mark Gardner. I cannot pronounce Stephen. Is it Jack Lich? Jack Lich? I can't pronounce Jack his last Lich. name. And I know Jack him well, Lich. too, and I can't pronounce his last name. But uh, I met Mark uh, when uh, I was actually teaching in the same place that Stephen was years ago. And Mark came up for some reviews, and we seemed to get along well. At least I thought we got along well. I don't know Mark thinks that, but it was uh, nice to hear him <laughs> on reviews and and talk. And I, I really got ex- excited about their work. I know St- Stephen's work, and I know Stephen does a lot of commercial, maybe a lot of uh, store design, retail design, but your firm is actually quite, does quite a bit more than that, including a lot of residential work. Um, just reading your own sort of bio, I mean, I know that you went to Penn, uh, same place that Doug went to. Uh, before that, Georgia Institute, Institute of Technology, and um, you are currently the director of the master program at Parsons, which, uh, that, congratulations, that must be kind of new. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't realize that. That's you. cool. Yeah, for the last year. Okay, that's awesome. So it makes it challenging to practice and, and do Keep that. Keep busy. But, uh, yeah, oh, very yeah. busy. Good. Hey, busy. So, so just real quickly, I, 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 I won't read your entire firm bio, but I really thought it was interesting to read, you know, this interest in the nexus of architecture and art and the idea that you're committed to practicing architecture as a socially beneficial art form. So art comes up a lot in your in your sort of uh, statements about your firm. Talk a little a little bit about that. Yeah, well, um, I, I think we, you know, as a as a practice, we try to focus on um, design. So design to us as a, as an is can be done artfully. <laughs> Uh, so we, we really want to, um, we really kind of focus in on the details. We focus in on the craft. We focus in on the making. Um, that's, that's sort of where that, that all comes from. And I think sometimes, you know, we look at it that um, ideas in architecture can come from outside of, come from outside of architecture. Um, out, you know, we like sort of um, looking at materials, new materials, um, trying different things. Um, so you have to take some risk. Talk a little bit about your firm. Um, you're, I should have mentioned you're New York based. I mean, Parsons is in New York, but your firm is New York based. So what's sort of the makeup of the, of the firm and how do you and Steven kind of manage practice? Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate. So it's Stefan Jacklich, uh, is my partner and, and I'm, I'm really fortunate to have a partner in that, um, as you mentioned before, I'm also, uh, director of the, the program at Parsons. So, you know, um, it's always great to have somebody to bounce something off of, um, somebody to work with. It's, it's hard to kind of work on your, on your own without that kind of feedback. We have a pretty good office. It's, uh, we're eight people now. Um, we started off doing a lot of, uh, as you mentioned before, the commercial retail, we were known for that. But, um, you know, we, we've expanded, we diversified, um, we do a lot of residential. In fact, a, a good part of our work right now is a good mix of residential, um, institutional office, commercial office. Um, we've gotten into public work. Um, we've done some work for nonprofits. So, yeah, that's that's really sort of who we are. Is the residential work because you're in New York? Um, and I, I kind of I think I know the answer, but it's it, it, most of those kind of projects are existing shell. Right? Yeah, because it's very few opportunities to build new buildings in New York City, right? That's right. I mean, if you're doing multifamily, then you're doing um, then you're doing sort of the larger buildings, um, midsize. Um, we we're, our focus is is really sort of single family home, so apartments. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, that's in the existing shell. Sometimes we find ourselves. Our last few projects have been um, apartment combinations for clients. Um, which you have to, being New York City, you have to jump through a few hoops with um, the different agencies. But, uh, you know, it's, it, it makes it interesting. But that's not to say we also, um, you know, we have clients sort of all over. So we've done ground up houses as well. 
Yeah, so this is interesting because we talk about uh, dream homes and we often think it's a freestanding building someplace. But of course, a dream home can be in New York City, in Manhattan, right? I mean, that's, I'm sure you've had clients that say, hey, I want to live in New York City. I want a dream home. So what, 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 would that, what, what does that mean to you or what, 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 what has that looked like? A dream home in Manhattan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the penthouse. <laughs> and you've done those. Uh, uh, we have done those. We just uh, we have one in, in Brooklyn um, and one handsome place that we did that we're really we're really proud of that um, has amazing views. Um, I just I love the place. I, I wish I lived there. Uh, <laughs> I'm like that with most of my clients. I you know I think we 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 really pour ourselves into a project and. Um, I remember, I think, as a young architect, the, one of the first uh, townhouses I worked on, uh, the client, I told the client at the end of the job, I was just like, wow, it's sort of, I've been here like every day for like the last month and it feels like I live here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, it, you know, I, I love this place kind of thing. And, and she was like, thank you. It's like, that means like, she was like, you, you put yourself into it. And so we, you know, we love it. Um, but she, that's, she that's, hasn't had you back, of course, right? Which, no, of course not. Once then, you get, then she asked you to get, leave. <laughs> she <to> get out. <laughs> Mark, you know, um, our, our, uh, our audience, I'm sure, would be interested to hear a little bit about working. You had touched on working with various uh, agencies in the city. And um, I'm interested to hear about the uh, approval process in the city. Is it time consuming? Is it burdensome? Is it bureaucratic? Is it simple? Is it incredibly difficult? What's it like? Um, all those things. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, it, it ends up being, it is, uh, it is a process. And uh, one of the first things you always have to let the client know is that, uh, Hey, we're going to have to go through this process because usually they, you know, coming to it, they're not really aware of, of what's, you know, what's in store. Yeah. Uh, and usually approvals through the Department of Building these days, you know, for an apartment we might do might be, you know, two to four weeks. Wow. Um, so the, for the approval, it's not bad. It's not yeah. bad. Now, now throw on top of that if you were doing um, landmarks. So if you're in a historic district. Okay. Now you're talking about, you know, depending on what you do, if it's interior based, you know, certificate of no effect, it doesn't take any time. But, you know, start to do anything to the outside. And, you know, if it goes beyond staff level, if it's something a little more um, sort of out there or an addition, um, then you're probably talking about months because you have to go through uh, uh, to the commission to actually present the project. Okay. And then the, do they have meetings uh, for the local community to take a look at the exterior changes you're making, that sort of thing as well? Yeah. So uh, that's that's when you start to go up in scale. Um, okay. there's, there's community boards and the community board takes a, takes a look at, at um, you know, what projects you're doing. But um, the scale we work at, we're usually... Um, we're, we're usually at staff level um, okay. with, with the uh, Landmarks Commission. We're usually uh, through easy through Department of Building because we're not, you know, um, you know, we're not doing a whole lot um, in terms of the interior. It's just when you get to the exterior and you're starting to do structural work. Yes. When uh, that's when things start to and you're moving plumbing. Uh, mm-hmm. That was the other thing I didn't even talk about was uh, there's also in New York, we have co-ops and condos. Okay. And so you actually have to um, get the approval of your neighbors. Oh boy. Well, right. It's just something a little different that people aren't quite used to. Yeah. Um, lived in the city. So you really have to, uh, you have to take your set to either the management company that's running the, the condo or co-op, yeah. or you're presenting it to the board of that. So you have to get approved by your neighbors before you can sort of do the work. It makes sense, you know, um, we're, uh, it's funny, we, my wife and I live in a, a co-op. We, we did some, some work in, in our apartment probably about a, a, a year and a half ago um, and, and, you know, had to sort of show our neighbors everything we had planned. Yeah. And, all. and uh, it, was, it was an adventure. It's funny because my wife sort of said, uh, you know, it's like the doctor and the patient kind of thing. She's like, you, you do this to other people. 
really <laughs> to tell you. you know, right. At the end of it, she was like, she'd had enough, and she was kind of like, you you do this for a living, <laughs> you know, awesome. like, because, you know, it's like, because we're like, the contractor, are we going to finish? We're almost finished. Oh, that part didn't come in. They're going to come back. They're coming back, you know, uh, all the things that kind of happen in construction. Yeah. Uh, and you think I'd be uh, well-tuned enough to kind of like be able to communicate and sort of, but, you know, I figured my wife had been around me long enough and heard right. all my stories, but then I, I found out she wasn't really listening to my story. <laughs> That's great. Great story. You, you know, Mark, I, I wonder about the logistics of working in New York City because I, I did it for a short amount of time. And I, I used to think about and I used to get involved with, of course, how to get material to the site, when it should be delivered. Uh, you need to secure an elevator. You need to protect yeah. everything through the hallways. Is, and the, is elevator. the elevator is the elevator big enough? To is get it big enough? You, yeah. Do they have to clean? The it's just there's a yeah. whole level of complexity, logistical complexity or complication that you know, you don't have for a, maybe a suburban house someplace. And do you, as an architect, get involved with that? I mean, is that part of your thinking as you're going through a project? I mean, how are you going to sort of manage the delivery and re re reception of material? And, and uh, again, you have to protect corridors. You have to think about the kinds of hours you can work. You can't work like on Saturdays, maybe. You can't work, on, right. certainly can't work on a Sunday. And how do you deal with all of that as an architect? Well, we're, we're looking at that from the beginning. So usually we're making the contractor aware of what the, you know, making sure they understand what the building rules are. Um, you know, in New York, we live pretty, pretty tight. So, you know, you have to be aware of, of, of other people. Um, you know, you have to be courteous, really, because, uh, you know, it kind of comes back at you. So, you know, it's down to the point of where sometimes with certain certain jobs we've done, I've actually gone out to the site at the end of the day to make things sure things are cleaned up. There's not stuff left out in the hall. You know, workers haven't left garbage kind of thing. Uh, you know, it, it, it can get pretty intense. Um, and, but that's also about the level of contractor we might be working with. Um, the sort of higher end contractors, it's like, it's just a machine, you know, it's like you don't really have to concern yourself with those things. They're a step ahead of you on it, you know, as you're mentioning it. But um, a lot of times, you know, if we're going through a bid process, the client may choose the um, the less expensive, uh, as we say, uh, bidder. And uh, all that ends up doing a lot of times, which I like to explain to clients is, okay, well, I want you to realize that's put a little more work on us yeah. to handle certain things. And, and there have been contractors we've worked with where I felt like, are we the back of house here? Are we the, like, wow. I'm, I feel like I'm writing out his, you know, to having somebody punch out his, you know, you know, write up his punch list or, um, you know, actually go through and, and walk through the site with the super to make things, sure things are, are going in order or deliveries have been made. Um, those are all like pretty tough things. And like you said, the, the biggest thing is like just thinking ahead about materials too, because, uh, you know, when you mentioned the elevator, oh, mm -hmm. boy, we've had like, you know, can we use the freight? Does the top come off the freight? How big does the piece have to be? We've had pieces, I think in that, um, I think the, the project I mentioned in Brooklyn where the, the contractor actually had to take that, he could only take the elevator part of the way up and then he had to walk the remaining 20, 15, 20 floors, I think, <laughs> with, a, with a huge, these huge uh, panels. Uh, they did it, you know. Um, furniture goes the same way, you know. It's like they've, they've had to walk furniture up, uh, you know, quite a few flights. Yeah, people don't, uh, it's funny, but New York projects, you don't realize, like, uh, you think, oh, let's have big marble slabs and have them big, huge pieces. And you think, yeah. well, hold on a second. We yeah. like the idea, but it's really heavy. Um, it, it's not going to fit in the elevator. I guess we could walk it up the stairs, but that means, like, four guys are going to have to carry it up the stairs, and it's however many flights, as you say. And um, yeah. these are things that you, you, know, you don't really think about, but it's like the execution of a design. It's not always the easiest thing. Yeah, we have, a, there, we have a project where we haven't even started the design yet. And the first, I, 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 I saw the wheels turning in my head and I'm like, the first thing I said to the client was, okay, I kind of see where you're going with this, but I feel like we're going to end up with a crane on this project, right. lifting pieces to the roof. 
and I, I'm, I'm just not sure if you're ready for the cost of that. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's a good point. Hey, Mark. So um, typically what we do is have our guests offer, you know, three things they're thinking about, three things that sort of excite them. Sometimes it's take the form of tips for homeowners. But do you have any things in residential design that kind of excite you right now? Or where is your mind right now in residential design? Hmm. Um, Trends? Well, anything yeah, on your side? Yeah, one of the things, um, and we're doing this uh, at Parsons as well, is that we're looking at um, timber construction and CLT. Mm. Uh, that's really um, exciting to me, like how fast that can kind of go up. But also uh, knowing how our, our you know, uh, the home, home building industry is sort of controlled by builders, it's, you know, it's interesting that um, there's a possibility in there for architects really to to sort of do something with that in terms of design. Um, well, elaborate more about that. So why, why explain about the timber construction? Uh, so timber construction, CLT, like cross laminated timber is um, sort of a really prefab fast construction that um, is really strong. The, the thing that I think a lot of people think about it is like, oh, well, we're talking about wood and so it's flammable and all that, but it's actually, um, it, it actually does well in fire tests. So it's because it's so uh, thick, right, as a, as a panel. Um, and these panels just go in, sort of snap in, and they're, they're actually doing buildings like planning skyscrapers, tall mm -hmm. buildings. Um, right now they're sort of midsize out of, out of them. Um, one of the companies I'm kind of looking at, if I can kind of mention it, sure. is, uh, is Katera. Mm -hmm. uh, they recently, they, so they bought a couple of architecture firms and they have a factory and they actually produce this, you know, the, the uh, Timber CLT. And um, they uh, bought Michael Green Architecture based out of um, Vancouver. They've also- Lord just, Sargent? Yeah, they just bought Lord, Lord Eck and Sargent out of Atlanta. Now that I'm trying to figure out like, hmm, where, is, <laughs> where are they going with that? Me like too. what, that's, that's beyond the sort of home market maybe, um, mm -hmm. the, 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 you know, house building. Um, but so timber, timber is is providing a kind of a different, let's say, option alternative to steel. Um, yeah. And right now with steel, we have some issues, perhaps with China and things that are going on with our right. government and and so on. And maybe timber is something that can be a, a, an alternative. Has an alternative um, has a very sort of um, very fast and efficient uh, prefab system. Interesting. Uh, they go up pretty quickly. So yeah, I'm, I'm on that site right now. It looks like um, you know, we've got tall buildings. They're building these things out of wood. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's really interesting. It's, it's really interesting. And so it's, it's one of the things that uh, is happening, though, is like in cities like, um, like New York, it's because of the fire codes, because we're so close together. The yeah. city's been a little slow to kind of, you know, adopt this. And so they're sure. like, ah, wood building. But um, actually, I think one of the first wood buildings is is happening in the city. So I think we're going to see more and more <laughs> of this type of construction. Mm, interesting. You know, one one thing I'd like you to touch back on real quick um, is your comment about architects taking on more responsibility when the owners end up choosing a lesser contractor, contractor who's you know got a lower price. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. really interesting because what most does. of the you know, most of the yeah. people that are listening would un wonder why is that the case? Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Like what kind of jobs do you end up doing because the contractor is not doing them? Yeah. So uh, one of the things that's not in there is usually the, uh, there are a few things that are first things to go. Um, we like shop drawings uh, and the contractor will be like, we're not going to be doing any shop drawings. We're just going to go from your drawings. Yeah. So we're why don't like, you explain? Why don't you explain what a shop drawing is for someone who doesn't understand what that is? Sure. So a, sh a shop drawing is, um, you know, a lot of clients think, you know, okay, well, you're doing the drawings and you're going to give them over to the contractor and they're just going to kind of do it from your drawings. Well, sometimes there are specialty contracts. The easiest one to think of as a, a vendor is a mill worker, right? So a mill worker is maybe going to be doing the whole like closet, the kitchen. Um, and they're going to take in in field measurements on site, and then actually do the drawings of how they're going to build all of these cabinets. So they're actually giving you the drawings back to, 
back to the architect to show you know, how they're going to assemble this thing, what it's made out of. We've read your drawings. We've looked through them. Here's how we're interpreting them, and here's how we're going to build them, which actually gives you, the architect, an opportunity to come back and sort of mark up and say, well, wait, we're going to be seeing this piece sitting over or, you know, make any sort of changes before it goes into fabrication. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, you get that for, for steel, you get that for, all, you know, all kinds of things. And, and uh, one of the things that ends up happening is those get kind of cut out and it's like, we're just going to go from your drawings. And that's the, that's the, maybe the worst thing you could tell an architect. I hate kind of giving it away, but right. it's like, you know, it's like, we're going to build exactly from your drawings. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and mistakes happen, right? mistakes happen and so it's like it's a double check really just to say yes. like hey we're gonna you know it's like uh measure measure twice cut once kind right of thing. on it's yeah. like so it's important in the process and so uh that ends up getting cut out so you're le that much more um involved and on edge about like how things are going to be made and so that sometimes means for us actually extra trips out to the fabricators oh, wow. uh, uh, shop to make sure to, to ask about how this pieces are going together. Yeah. Um, I think we did metal windows, like uh, steel windows for a, a pavil little pavilion we did for a client. And, you know, I had to go out to the shop, like it felt like every other day and, you know, as they were making progress just to make sure that, oh, how are you welding this? Okay, are we gonna see, okay, remember the glass is this thick? We have, oh. you know, so you're having all these discussions that um, you're having to remind them of, of yeah. Coordinate, coordinate with where some of the other trades and things are coming in, which when I say that is the thing you expect from the general contractor to do. Right. But you find yourself actually caught in the midst of uh, having to remind each vendor of like what the next vendor is doing, sometimes even bring their work to the vendor and say, look, here's where I got the plumber's you know, stuff, here's the, the spec sheet, and here's where this pipe is going and look you've got to cut this out and make sure you know so you're coordinating and trying to make sure everything's and and actually uh, calling the super on site and then trying to get a dimension oh my so gosh. You, you know so that you can make sure and these are things like now i'm sure my insu our insurance company's listening and they're like what? <laughs> right, they're going like oh my god <laughs> oh god you're not you didn't tell us you were doing that like you know yeah yeah we're doing that okay occasionally right. When necessary, you know, um, but I think it, it ends up also sometimes on the uh, on the accounting side um, in the in the back of office where contractors are, you know, here I'm running I'm running a change order. It's like there's a weird conflict there because you're you're being asked like, okay, so we have this change order. I've scribbled it down on an envelope. We need to present it to the client, and I'm like, let us type this up a little better. <sighs> so understand you know and give it back to you because it's a guy working out of the back of his truck and he yeah. just you know and you're um, losing money the whole time right because you're not getting paid for that work necessarily you're not the client doesn't the clients never quite understand they're like right. well he's doing the work what what i don't understand what you're you, you you did these drawings you're all done right i mean other yeah. than making sure he's building it according to the drawings and it's like yeah, you're doing a lot of extra, you're putting a lot of extra work in. Yeah, wow. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, when, when we can and talk it through with the clients, we can, um, you know, we can work that out. Uh, yeah. But um, most of the time, it's like, no, they probably aren't going to really understand it. But for the sake of the project, you, you put in that time. Right. Let me ask you a question, Mark, about, um, about teaching your connection to academia. You know, when I... You know, the few times that I've had to hire a lawyer or, well, let's say when I work with a structural engineer and I learn that they're teaching someplace, I actually really like it. It makes me feel, I don't know, that somehow the person I'm working with is sort of up to date, is sort of aware of what's happening. I mean, how, how do you, let's say a client finds out that you're teaching at a school. Does, is that ever, do they see it as a positive? Do they think your time will be divided? How do they sort of understand or comprehend kind of that? that? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Usually they think it's pretty cool. I'm, you know, it's like I'm. Uh, they they feel like, oh, you're yeah, you're probably up to date with sort of things that are going on. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's it, like I said earlier, it's great that um, I have a partner that Stefan's in the office. And so, um, and even when I'm at school, you know, it's not like given, you know, technology and everything, I'm reachable. In fact, almost too much so. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> because it's like I get the, you know, uh, 1130 at night text from the client. Hey, we just start thought we'd stop by the site today and noticed, you know, this isn't done yet, you know, kind of thing. And so uh, I'm always kind of reachable. Um, the, the problem isn't for them. The problem is really for me mm-hmm. is actually how to make sure I'm, I'm devoting my time specifically to the task at hand. So when I'm teaching, I try to be, I'm in that space and I'm trying not to be, you know, um, I'm away from the practice. And when I'm in the practice, I, I try to really devote my time to that. Um, how successful am I being with that? Uh, I'll get back to you about that. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying, you know. It's, it's, do, it's, do, do, uh, you think that, do you think that by teaching and by being around students and their fun ideas and other faculty that you just become a better designer as a result, that that translates into practice? Oh, I think, I think it definitely does. I think it definitely does. It really, um, because you're, you're really sort of working in this world of ideas. And so it's like there are things you can sort of bring back um, to the office or, or even where I found, like I never thought it, never thought much about it coming the other way. It's like things where I'm doing in the office that I end up bringing um, into, the, into the classroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, it's like I do, uh, I, I teach the design build studio. And uh, one of the things we were doing there was we were talking about how, like, all these voices, everybody's trying to communicate. And I suggested to them that they get on Slack, um, which is an app that allows you to do, uh, you know, project management. A lot of Silicon Valley companies and stuff use it. Uh, my wife was the one that kind of introduced me to it. She uses it with her company. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I like suggested to the students because they were they were doing something crazy. They were like texting each other, group text. I hate group text. You know, it's like they're just sort of like, you know, they said like, I hate this group text. I'm in the middle of class and my phone's going ding, 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 you know. <laughs> right. uh, and, and it's like, I know there's some something bad happening, but I can't really pull out my phone. I don't want to get in the middle of it kind of thing. And so um, Slack was nice because it let them sort of post something. And then when they could get to it, then respond, respond to it. Um, so that's something that's, that's interesting that we've, you know, we use different things. Um, we're on a project now where we're using Asana. Um, which is a task project management like task oriented software and scheduling um, and so that that allows us to communicate we're working with a company out uh, a practice out in San Francisco uh, and and the client is actually out there and so it allows us to kind of everybody to sort of see where things are are in the schedule mm-hmm. um, and what are the tasks that who's handling what uh, so rather than it just be on in meeting notes on paper it's uh you know it's digital you can go to the site you can go to the app and you can sort of see where things are currently that's well that would count as number two for your tip then right should we just say that that's number two yeah for- yeah well i mean it's always well good. if the contractor thing was number two that was number three <laughs> did i get the three already <laughs> well, we got to give him one more we got to give him one more <laughs> one more what, what excites you in residential design one more kind of idea already fantastic uh, bits of information well, uh, what- tell me what you're thinking about what excites you well, one of the things I'm, I'm sort of looking at is like um, the sort of uh, the open plan and how there's sort of a, uh, there, there's been some um, backlash, I guess, yeah. against like things have gotten too open. That's not just in residential. That's also when you think about commercial office, like mm-hmm. Googling the world kind of thing, where it's like the open office area that goes on for miles. Yeah. transparency like Apple, like people running into glass, you know, it's like <laughs> we've, we've reached that moment. Ah, uh, you know, it's like, it's amazing, you know, but it's like, where have we gotten? It's sort of like people's privacy. Um, you know, when I think about it in residential or, or, you know, in the home, it's like, I kind of, I grew up in a home that had a, uh, the kitchen was a separate room 
Um, and when my mom was like frying stuff or doing whatever, you know, like she could just close off the kitchen. So the smells stayed in the kitchen yeah. kind of thing. and didn't go through the house. They still went through the house cause she was putting her foot in it and making something really good. But, uh, you know, it's like, so there, there's that kind of thing where I'm actually seeing some clients actually start to think about, um, like some of those rooms as being separate and not having such a big open floor plan, but like the big open kitchen. Now that's not to say we aren't doing projects like that. We are, but it's just interesting to me when a client sort of asks about a, you know, having some of these rooms being separate or private little areas or warrens or offices that they could kind of like, you know, the secret through the bookcase, like, can I go to a little room where I can escape the kids and they can't find me. And it's like, well, they'll know it's there, but okay. Wow, that's, that's really great. interesting. Yeah, because we've talked about this often, and of course, the tendency is, oh, just open it all up, open it all up. And yeah. it's interesting to hear you say this because I wonder about this just having kids, and I need privacy, I need quiet. I mean, you need sort of places to go away from everybody, not always be connected. Yeah. So it's interesting to hear yeah. that. Yeah, I see that being asked for more and more, and it's um, it's interesting to me. I'm still kind of wrapping my head around it a little bit because, oh. yeah, my, my I mean, my idea is like, yeah, like open. I mean, I did that to our apartment. Was like, like I said earlier when we renovated, my wife was like, you only get two walls, you know, like because huh. I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna like tear everything out, and uh, you know, I was like, yeah, you know, it'd be nice to have this be really open, but um, you know, as we got into the renovation, I found like yeah, you know what, I want this area to be separate or you're going to have a little office area that's that's separate and quiet and you can close off the doors, um, have a little pocket door, close it off. Or if you want to work out in the kitchen, we have an open kitchen to the living room. You can sit there too. So um, giving people options like that is always pretty, mm. pretty fantastic. Hey, Doug, any last questions for Mark? We're sort of coming yeah. to that time. Yeah, real quickly. So um, I noticed on the website, uh, there's a, a portion where you guys talk about our feature patterns. And I know that it, it yeah. would seem that that comes from uh, at least a little bit working with Mark Jacobs. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think, well, uh, that even goes beyond the sort of Mark Jacobs work or, or any of yeah. our retail work. I think yeah. we're um, we're always sort of interested, as I, I mentioned in the beginning, about materials like yeah. um, and textures um, it's something that I think is a thread for our work in, in terms of when I talk about making or fabrication. Yeah. Uh, uh, for me, I'm always sort of thinking about like how can we take that, that sort of everyday material and make it something really special. And, mm-hmm. and to your point, maybe that is something Mark Jacobs' work was, as we were working with him at that time, was sort of doing that, like how do you um, take a sweatshirt and then make it out of like cashmere? You know, get so it's really nice. And so, um, you know, how do you take like uh, wood and sort of, you know, sort of work at at it and create a pattern or how do you take a tile? Um, And uh, the Tokyo building we worked on was one that I'm really proud of where we did a a tile that had a break line. Um, They broke it and then you got two pieces. So you had this sort of pattern ran. Uh, from and and you just replicated the piece. You just had a bunch of pieces, but then you, you had all different sort of shapes. Um, and then we had that on the facade. Yeah. Uh, and that's just taking. And that was a cheap way to do it too, which I'm also really proud of. It was just like a an easy process, a sort of two step process that then created something that was like mass customization. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, it was definitely a feature of the site that you don't see on most architects' websites. Yeah, so clearly I, feature your work as well. well yeah, Mark, I'd like I to think you, uh, of ourselves like. You know, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I was I was saying that we're. Um, it's not so much that we have a uh, a style, and so sometimes clients come to us and they're like, you know, well, what's your style, or what do you do, or what's your favorite kind of work to do? Um, or they looked at our website and they were like, oh, I wasn't sure if you did residential. I saw some things, but I saw more of the other work and. Um, you know, I'll, I'll usually tell them that, um, look, hey, my favorite work to do is residential. Um, my least favorite work to do is residential. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> because you know it all depends on the client. That's good. Um, and so that's where the that's where the design kind of stems from. Is like you know we work with our clients, and then so that's where it, the journey kind of leads us. So it's not like we come to them with a hey, we're going to do this style, and that's how it's going to look. And you know that's that's not really how we operate. Awesome. So, Mark, how can uh, people find you, learn more about your, your firm? Sure. Um, you can Google us. Uh, we're, uh, it's um, Jack Litch Gardner Architects. Um, you know, Jack uh, Litch. That's going to be the hard one. That's going to be that's going to be the hard one. But you can also do Mark Gardner Architect and you'll Got get it. Jack Litch Gardner. Uh, and um, also you can uh, find me at, uh, at Parsons as well if you go to the Parsons site and our design build studio. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mark. I really appreciate uh, you doing this. Thank you. This is exciting. Love it. Love what you guys do. Thanks, Mark. Really appreciate it. So you've been listening to Design Your Dream Home with Doug and Steve. We'd love to hear from you. So contact us on our website, shoot us an email, ask us a question, and we'll get back to you. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be speaking with you next time.